Hello everyone, this is Fenomedic here, and uh, I know it's been quite a long time since I've uploaded a video of me reading a story. I do apologize for that. Um, without getting too personal, actually, I thought that initially... It's kind of funny, because initially I was going to write the type of story that I'm going to be reading today for a Gravity Falls story, specifically a Ford X Reader, but I ended up not finishing that and everything. I might still finish it, but I'm not quite sure now because I think it might be kind of repetitive. I have a couple other ideas for a Gravity Falls 4 Dex Raider um, and also a Stan X Raider. I understand that y'all probably came to that Wipad book for Dipper, but I may actually consider writing a couple stories for the Gravity Falls characters now that I've been more invested in them. So I may consider that in the future. Um, but all that aside, I actually recently did get back onto Tumblr. Um, I deleted my old Tumblr blog. I've deleted all the ones I've had before in the past. So I ended up making a new one, and I will be leaving a link of it down in the description below and everything. And I thought in my mind that it would be kind of nice to post some stories on there too, so there's going to be a lot of places that a lot of my stories are going to be posted. I don't know if I'm going to post them all on like post one story on all the sites I'm on like this one but I'm not I'm not sure um but irregardless um I decided to start off this Tumblr account with a macaque x gender neutral reader because I have become obsessed with monkey kid for like more recently and I 1000% blame my brother for that but I hope that all of you see this as rather worth it to come back to um but this also will kind of be giving a bit of a, like, a vague explanation as to why I have been gone. I'm not really going to go into all the details in this. I never went into detail in this story, and I probably won't even in this video. But I hope that all of you enjoyed this Macaque X Gender Neutral Reader. I honestly may change the title of this. So if the video and the story are titled something different in the future, that is why. Because I was going to use this line of dialogue, but completely forgot about it. <laughs> but the title of this story is You're Worrying Me. And right before we get started, I'm going to leave a couple trigger warnings in this right before we jump in. So if any of these following topics could be at all disturbing to you or troubling or triggering, then this is just not your story. You may want to skip ahead, like click off and just uh, wait for the next one. Um, but the trigger warning I'm going to be leaving for this video and story are the mentions of nightmares, trouble eating and sleeping, and the reader struggling with self-care in general. I don't know if you would classify this as an angst story, but there is going to be a nice sweet fluffiness and confessions at the end of the video, at the end of the story to make up for this, but I will be also adding to these warnings if I need to. So, without further ado, let's get started. Macaque tried to let it slide at first. Really, he did. But it was almost 3 p.m., and your name was still sleeping. Normally, he would probably just assume they went to sleep late le late the night before or something. But the thing is, this has been happening for over a month now. It worried Macaque because his first thought was that something was wrong with your name's sleep. As the clock ticked on, closer and closer to late afternoon, he decided he couldn't wait anymore and went to, and went to wake your name up. When Macaque opened the door, he realized he had not been in your name's room in a while. It was rather messy, to say the least. Clothes were thrown on the chair and desk and were lying on the floor. There were small wrappers all over the dresser. And even though your name was lying in bed, it was super messy. Some of the blankets and pillows were lying on the floor around the bed, and one of the plushies that was previously on the bed was somehow thrown to the other side of the room, right in front of Macaque's feet at the bedroom door. Macaque picked up the plushie and slowly approached the bed, placing it by your name's feet. When he looked at your name's face, Macaque noticed that, that their facial expression twisted into a look of discomfort. Their eyes were screwed shut and they groaned like a zombie. It didn't take a brain scientist or rocket surgeon to figure out what was happening to your name in their mind. Macaque wanted nothing more than to wake them up. He wanted to relieve them of whatever horrors they were dreaming about. But he bit his tongue and held back, knowing better than he probably should that being woken up during a nightmare can cause more harm than good. 
The mental image of your name being woken up, crying, or even screaming because Macaque was too selfish made his heart clench. He just decided to wait for his best wait by his best friend's side, even though his heart raced so fast it almost made his ears ring. Macaque gr gently grabbed your name's hand, swallowing his pride and rubbed the gentle circles on their skin. He couldn't say how much time had passed as he watched your name, his heart breaking as he saw them grow antsier and antsier in their dream. Your name finally opened their eyes. They squinted at the sun shining through their bedroom window. They looked over at Macaque, seeing that he didn't even bother trying to hide the fear on his face. It was only then that they noticed Macaque's hand on their own as his grip tightened slightly. It wasn't enough to hurt, but it, it showed that he was very scared. Macaque, or your name simply spoke through a hoarse voice. Hey, Macaque. They then cleared their throat. <clears throat> what are you doing in my room? Is something wrong? Macaque averted his eyes, glancing around. He put on a smirk to try and hide his anxiety. I, uh, was actually kind of hoping you could tell me that. Your name shrugged. Nothing new, they said as they slowly sat up. Before my cat could question what they meant, your name turned to him and spoke with a slight blush. Mind if I get dressed? Macaque cat blushed and cleared his throat. Yeah, sure. Take your time. I'll go make you some lunch. Don't you mean breakfast? Your name asked, clearly aware of the time. Breakfast doesn't happen past three, your name. Your name, Macaque said with a smirk. He then left the room. Your name sighed as they checked the clock. Sure enough, 3.15 p.m. They dug through the piles of clothes on their desk and chair. They had finally landed on an outfit they had worn a few days this week. While your name was aware they should do laundry, the thought was too depressing to commit to. The idea of clothes all, of all the clothes to sort through and the self-loathing over not doing the laundry sooner made your name shiver in discomfort. The aroma of eggs on the frying pan, mango juice, and waffles filled the air in the kitchen. Your name felt their mouth water and their stomach growled so lightly, so loudly that it alerted Macaque of their presence. Hungry? Macaque gasped with a chuckle. Your name nodded sheepishly. sheepishly. I thought you said breakfast didn't happen past three. Your name pointed out with a small smile. Macaque found himself staring at that perfect grin for longer than he should have been. He snapped out of his trance and cleared his throat, turning his attention back to the eggs. I don't remember saying that. Macaque played dumb to see if he could get a reaction from your name. He did. Your name laughed lightly before their expression turned soft. Thanks, Macaroni. Your name was the only person that could call him that. Period. There was eventually a small silence that followed as Macaque focused on finishing the cooking. Eventually, it was all done and the pair started eating. Although, your name suddenly felt very full, despite only eating less than five bites. They pushed themselves they pushed the food around on the plate on the plate trying to motivate themselves to eat but for whatever reason the same the, the smell of delicious food that made them want to eat a mountain suddenly made them never want to touch food again it was all so confusing these feelings macaque noticed that your name lacked the sparkle in their eyes as they stared down at their plate he heard another loud gurgle from your name's stomach but they didn't make an effort to eat does it taste that bad? Your name Macaque chuckled as he tried to hide his disappointment. No, 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 no. It tastes good, I swear. Your name yelled, their hands waving in front of them frantically. I, I just have been having trouble eating lately. Sometimes I feel really hungry and everything, but I... Macaque grabbed your name's hands in an attempt to stop their loud rambling. It worked, thankfully. It's okay, your name. I'm not mad, Macaque said in a, sw in a soft and sweet tone. <laughs> How about I save your food for you? Macaque was reaching for your name's plate, but he still waited for them to say something to not pressure them. There were a couple sp seconds of small silence, but eventually your name nodded once. Macaque frowned for a moment, but he smiled again as fast as he could to hide his fear deep inside. He took the plate. To he took the plate and saved the food. The two were worrying for different, uh, worrying even if for different reasons. Your name was scared of the idea of telling Macaque what was wrong because they didn't even know what was wrong. Meanwhile, Macaque was trying to figure out what, figure out just that. Things were so good only a month ago, but slowly your name fell back. It worried him so much because your name and he had become so close over the time they had known each other. 
He hadn't expressed it much, but your name had helped him in ways that he never thought possible. They helped him overcome his insecurities. They helped him grow more comfortable with touches that didn't involve fighting. Heck, they helped Macaque become friendly enough to do things like offer a stranger on the street a small smile. Macaque didn't like the fact that he wasn't able to help your name at the moment. He felt the problems were meant to be solved. He wanted nothing more than to scoop up your name and pepper them with kisses, to give them comfort for whatever was troubling them. But he didn't want to scare them off. The two of them had been friends for so long, Macaque didn't even know he could feel this level of love for someone since... him. But even though Macaque knew your name long enough that he loved them, to know that he loved them, he didn't know if that was reciprocated. But it was. Your name was just as afraid of the idea of Macaque not feeling the same way, so they made their affection as subtle as possible so they wouldn't ruin the friendship. When they first met him, Macaque was so bruised deep inside. Your name refused to call him broken the entire time they had known him, because he was so much stronger inside than he ever thought. But now your name felt much more bruised than they had felt in a long time. It scared them. Eventually, everything was cleaned up and put away. Your name was still sitting at the table when Macaque walked over to them and offered them his hand. Your name gave him a confused look, but they trusted him and placed their hands in his. Macaque pulled them up out of their chair and led them to the couch. He sat the two of them down and very gently wrapped an arm around your name's shoulder to pull them close to him. He leaned them back and your name curled up, to, curled their legs up onto the couch and leaned on him. The two of them stayed like that for a while, their faces beat red and hearts racing a million miles a second. But eventually, Macaque couldn't handle the silence anymore. He turned his head to look at your name, bringing a hand up to hold their face to meet his gaze. You know you can tell me if something's wrong. Right? Macaque whispered the last word so softly that it made your name's stomach flip. They nodded one time, but they knew that kind of response just wouldn't cut it. Your name sighed and pulled their head away from Macaque's grip. I know I can tell you, but I don't even know if I. But I don't even know what I know. But I don't even know what to tell you. For some reason, I have felt really out of it the past couple weeks. I want to eat, but I can't. I need to sleep, but I get nightmares. I. I want to hug you, but I'm scared. Not even a second after that sentence left your name's lips, Macaque grabbed them and hugged them as though they would disappear. You don't have to be scared, your name. I... I don't usually do this. Expressing myself, I mean. But with you, it's different. Macaque laughed just a little bit. I don't usually let people get as close to me as you. I trust you to call me Macaroni. I let you touch me. I... I let myself love you. At that moment, your name had been lighter than they probably had all their life. They pulled away and looked Macaque in his gorgeous eyes. I let myself love you too. Macaque smiled, and he looked from your name's eyes to their lips. Your name got the hint pretty quickly, and the two of them slowly leaned in. Macaque and your name were a hair away from kissing, but Macaque still mumbled over the thick silence. Are you sure? Your name answered by closing the distance and kissing him. It was short, and they pulled away too soon for Macaque's liking. He pulled them back in, but gave room to your name room to break away should they choose to. They didn't. Eventually, the pair parted for air. Macaque took your name's hand and, ha and held a look of love on his face that made your name feel like royalty. How many people got to see this side of him? Sadly, not enough. I'm willing to work with you on what's bothering you. I can't fix this overnight, Macaque said sadly, but smiled as he continued. But I mean, you help me. I might as well try and return the favor. Your name smiled and kissed one of his ears and whispered, I'd like that. I really am proud of how this story turned out for the most part. I feel like the Macaque was slightly out of character, a little too much for my liking, but I think it turned out rather nice, honestly. And I don't know if anyone who is um, Monkey Kid, Lego Monkey Kid fans caught the slight Shadow Peach reference that I made in the story, but I thought 
I low-key really ship Shadow Peaches in the show very much, and if you look on my Tumblr, you're gonna see a lot of, like, reblogs of Shadow Peach stuff, and I legit love that ship too much now. It's not even fair. <laughs> so, I'm really happy with how this story turned out. And I really hope you guys like this too. I know that I've been writing a lot of crazy stuff lately. I've been kind of all over the place, but if it's not obvious, this fanfic was more of a venting fic for me. And I know that it's not normal for me to typically do that. I, as of the last couple, to like, stories I've written have tried to make things more... I, I try to center it around the fact that you can make your own interpret- Like, you can put as much of yourself in the stories that I write as I can. But I didn't do it this time. And as much as I wanted to make this applicable to anyone, it was really hard. And I think that's why I may take the Ford x reader that I was writing and just adjust that slightly. Because it was a pain to try and write that story. I'm not going to go on to all of the specifics here because it's really a bit of a triggering topic for many people, even partly for myself, but I tried to talk about certain things in my own life in that story as a way to kind of explain why I've been gone, but it was so exhausting to write that. I could probably only do a paragraph and then I would quit because it was so tiring and it was so hard for me to motivate myself to write for it, and I just couldn't do it. And I scrapped, like, half of it, wrote another half, and I still didn't like where it was going. So I may honestly do something else. The main idea I've had is maybe making a Stanford or Stanley X reader with Hana Hockey. I thought that would be really cool. Or even an older dip or a Bill Cipher story where the reader has Hana Hockey. Just a Hana Hockey story in general. So I hope that all of you enjoyed this story. And I hope to be more active in the future. But I honestly not make promises considering college. And also just a lot of life stuff. I am seeking treatment by the way. To give you guys a bit of reassurance that I am okay. Um, I honestly don't know how I would even describe my mental health right now. I think it's more just all over the place, but I hope to get better soon and everything. And I thank all of you for being so patient with me. I truly don't deserve it, but I love you guys here regardless for it. So thank you all so very much for writing. I'm sorry that this video was so long. And as always, this is Fender and I'll be seeing you all very soon. Bye-bye.